Hello, welcome to another episode of The Gospel Truth. I am your host, uh, Josh Lucas, and I'm very happy to be here. And I'm very excited because today is actually a very special episode of The Gospel Truth because not only am I sitting here with uh, an amazing counselor and very intelligent counselor, but I'm also here with my mother-in-law. Yeah. So uh, this is Laurel Clausen or Mrs. K as our students here in the Midwest to know her as. Um, and we're going to be talking to you about uh, a very uh, important but also very sensitive topic today. Um, it's uh, very sad news that we're going to be uh, introducing today. Uh, we're going to be talking about suicide, um, especially among young people. Um, when, when we say young people, I think we're uh, talking about in the realm of teenager to young adults, um, kind of in my generation, if not a little bit younger. Um, but uh, yeah, we're going to be really focusing on that today with also doing some other things uh, that I'll be doing a little bit later. But I know that you have a lot of, or not a lot, you have a little bit of time, so I want to make sure that we get right to the thing. So I'm just going to turn it over to you. Who are you, Mrs. K? Well, so I, I am a school counselor. Um, I want to make sure that uh, people are aware that that is a different role than a mental health counselor. Mm. We do handle, um, we address mental health in a learning kind of way, mm -hmm. not to say that mental health counselors don't, but we're not therapists. Uh. We, we try to help students learn how to problem solve mm -hmm. um, and just support them mm -hmm. in whatever issues or needs that they are going through. Mm -hmm. So um, one thing school counselors will do always is if they feel like a student needs to be referred out to a mental health counselor, they will do that. Ah, mm -hmm. all right. Excellent. Very yeah. good. Awesome. Anything else that we should know about you or uh, anything mm -hmm. like that? Um, yeah, I've been in, in the counseling world for, I guess, over 20 years. And I've seen a lot of changes in kids. I would mm -hmm. say when I started... Um, we didn't address, I shouldn't say we didn't address suicide as often as it is now, but we didn't. Mm. It wasn't as prevalent. It mm. definitely, the numbers have risen, unfortunately. Sure. But yeah, we are getting more um, trained and well-versed mm. in this area. Sure. Yeah, and I think we'll we'll talk about that and address that issue because, you know, suicide's usually not the easiest thing to talk about and no, but it's an important thing exactly to talk about, absolutely right? definitely well why don't we just jump right into this huh okay. so uh uh the main uh the main topic of discussion today uh is a young lady uh by the name of katie meyer i don't mm -hmm. know if uh you did some research on this but sadly uh Katie Meyer was a Stanford uh, goalie at Stanford University, uh, and she took her own life March 1st, 2022, um, as reports say, on uh, on an on-campus residence. Um, so it was very shocking to the athletic world, but also to the collegiate world, um, and people are sharing her picture all around mm -hmm. Facebook, Instagram, everything else. Um, but it's very interesting because it's not only talking about uh, the, the issue of suicide or anything, but her story is being spread around of pressure put on mm -hmm. to student athletes, pressure put on to students overall, just in general. Um, and obviously she's in college, so she has kind of a different kind of pressure that's on her. But, um, but it's interesting, um, because, uh, as her parents were interviewed on the Today Show, uh, they were speculating that her suicide uh, revolved around an email, and I got I got a couple of notes here uh, that that it was regarding uh, that they speculated her suicide revolved around an email from her school regarding a hearing that she was going to have uh, for a disciplinary action that she was involved in. Hmm. So they don't know. Well, they didn't disclose what the situation was. It sounded like they had an idea of what was going on. But they obviously didn't share that on the air because what would be the point of that, right. you know? Right. Um, and she was a senior who studied international relations and history. Mm -hmm. So seemed like she was a pretty intelligent girl. Mm -hmm. uh, teammates and friends labeled her as a larger-than-life team player and outstanding student athlete 
and a beloved, passionate leader. So I guess my, my first uh, question um, is, I mean, just off of your point of view, I mean, hearing a larger than life team player or an outstanding student athlete and a beloved, passionate leader, maybe just give us a couple of seconds or just a little thoughts on what would draw a person to do that if they're labeled as a larger than life team player or an outstanding person, yeah. you yeah. know? And that is a really good question, Josh. We hear of these kinds of stories. Mm -hmm. I mean, when we hear of a suicide, we don't always hear, you know, the person was struggling. Mm -hmm. um, we can hear those. Mm -hmm. It's not unusual, but um, we also hear these types of stories like mm -hmm. this came out of the blue. We didn't, nobody saw this coming. Um, it's so unexpected. A lot of times there might not even be any information left. Like maybe this right. could have been a trigger, this right. um, email. So sometimes it can really keep us guessing. Mm -hmm. um, but one of the things that we, we also want to look at is a lot of times we will associate with suicidal ideation mm -hmm. um, or tendencies that there could be some depression or very um, depressive thoughts mm -hmm. going on. Now, right. I'm not going to get into the whole, the whole discussion of um, clinical depression sure. and the different types of depression, but depression can be in, you know, there's kind of a wide range of it. Mm -hmm. I mean, we can easily say, you know, I was feeling kind of depressed today. Sure. Right. That doesn't mean I'm suicidal. Absolutely. Right. Okay. Right. Absolutely. So I think that's really clear mm -hmm. to, or important to make clear is that if your child says they're feeling kind of sad, mm -hmm. they're feeling kind of depressed, it doesn't mean they're going to necessarily go and oh. end their life. Sure. But the important thing is to always be watching for different kinds of signs. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we're going to talk a little bit. Mm -hmm. I'm guessing. Yeah. Did you have that on your yeah. agenda? No, or I, do you, I, did, did you want me to? No, I definitely, talk about yeah. Some? I mean, I got a couple, I will not a couple. I got a few questions that I wanted to ask you just revolving around uh, suicide. First off is, mm -hmm. um, I guess right in the meat of things, what is the best way to prevent suicide? I would say the best way is to know the signs oh. and not be afraid to start that conversation. Sure. A lot of times we um, we think if we say to someone, "Are you are you thinking of ending your life or have you had suicidal thoughts?" We think that that's going to push them over the mm, edge. Right. That's not actually true. Mm -hmm. Okay. It can open up that conversation. Right. If you know a person well enough, you're going to also be able to read some of their body language and just mm -hmm. how they are communicating with you. So being in communication with your right. child, with uh, friends. I mm -hmm. mean, um, I think about when I was still in the school setting as a school counselor and oh, kids coming right. and saying, I'm really worried about my friend because they're mm -hmm. saying things like, I don't want to live anymore. Oh, or yeah. I can't, sure. I can't face this. Right. Um, right. And they've even said things like, you know, maybe I should just not even, maybe life would be easier if I wasn't even around, mm. you know, and we're hearing that at a younger and younger age. Mm -hmm. So a few things, first of all, because we will even hear kids say like, oh, I just want to die. Mm -hmm. Okay. When a person says that it's important to address the seriousness of saying something like that. Mm -hmm. um, when someone says something like that, they should be taken seriously. Sure. Okay. Not just Definitely. pass it off because right. what if they are having those thoughts mm -hmm. and you laughed it off mm -hmm. or you said, don't think that way. Right. Okay. First right. of all, I can't tell you how to think <laughs> right. because everybody's in control of their own thoughts. Right. Sure. So the important things I guess is, is knowing kind of where they are, mm -hmm. Um, talking to them, yeah. knowing how things are going on in their life. But a lot of times too, um, even if, I mean, think about how many times you've maybe been feeling kind of down, mm. but you put on a happy face. Right. Okay. Right. And nobody can tell mm -hmm. how you feel mm -hmm. because you can fake it pretty right. well, mm -hmm. which is possibly the case with this gal. Oh, yeah. I mean, absolutely. they were surprised. Right. She was a leader. Right. She was right. a standout. Yeah. She was, you know, mm -hmm. a great 
uh, person to be around, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. So she was able to put that front on as many of us do. Right. And yeah. I don't want to say she was doing this because I don't personally know her or right. the situation. Right. But a lot of times we can, we can put on the front that we want to mm -hmm. have put on mm -hmm. for others to see us. Sure. Sure. So having conversations, knowing what's going on, being mm -hmm. as a parent, as a sibling, right. um, as a friend, right. kind of knowing what's going on mm. and just um, in their life by being interested. Right. We are kind of, we kind of live in a society where the focus is a lot of times we want the focus to be on me, mm -hmm. me, what I'm Definitely. doing. I want to talk about what I'm doing right. and what's all important to me mm -hmm. and my self-esteem and right. all of this stuff. Sure. Instead of saying, you know, how are you doing? Right. And then really listening to that sure. and not saying, oh, well, sure. guess what? And right. one-upping it. Like, yeah, right. you think you had a bad day? Well, let me tell you about mine. <laughs> right. So it's important right. to really cue into people mm -hmm. and then watch for some of those signs. So sure. if a person starts um, some some signs that might wave a red flag mm -hmm. for you, they start giving things away. Sure. Here, this is really important for me, to me, but I want you to have it. Oh, right. Well, why? Why, why are, are you, you giving, giving it away? away that right. is so right. important to you and right. you're giving it to right. me. Right. Yeah. Um, other signs is talk about not talking about like comments like you know not <coughs> it's you know not important for me to really be around life maybe would sure. be easier if i wasn't mm, yeah. around yep. um okay. that would be i i just want to not miss any so mm -hmm. um talking about it mm -hmm. in general um sometimes talking about going away well maybe uh -huh. i'm just going to go away for a while mm. okay the problem is is that suicide is a permanent solution mm. to a temporary problem. Yeah. So right. when you are having depressive thoughts, mm -hmm. whether you're clinically depressed or not, mm -hmm. but you are down a lot, your, your whole mood is down, mm -hmm. and you could be experiencing some depression, mm -hmm. it's almost like... Have you ever put on um, some of those glasses that make things look kind of funny? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah or a okay. filter. Filters. Right. Yes. Um, oh, boy. Yes, the filters. The filters yes. for social yes. media. You can right. put those on and you yep. see things differently. They're yep. distorted. Yep. Okay? So if I am really down and distorted, I don't see things the same. It's mm. almost like I have a filter up right. that doesn't show me that this is just a temporary problem. Sure. That there can be a solution. Mm. Um, it it doesn't show me that um, who can I go to for help. Mm -hmm. It might even distort comments that people make to me mm -hmm. in a different way than what they intended. Sure. They might be reaching out to me for help, but I'm not taking it that way. Mm. Sure. Um, so, again, if they're mental state is in that spot mm, mm -hmm. um they are you know they're down they're very maybe they're very frustrated they have mm. a lot of frustrations over things like seeing something coming up like maybe a big game or disappointing the team mm -hmm. or um, maybe even academic coursework being yeah. overwhelming and oh my gosh I'm going to fail this test and right. that means I'm going right. to fail the class right. and how am I going to look to everyone yeah. else and my parents right. are going to be so mad I'm going to be grounded right. forever right absolutely um, those sorts of thoughts then just start can really start reeling and mm -hmm. they see no way out it's almost right. like I'm in a trapped sure. spot so really having that communication and kind of knowing where they're at is really important. Um, referring to things as, I won't be needing this. Ah, uh, right. Mm. Yeah. There's a key. Yeah. Um, um, feeling hopeless or feeling guilty about mm. things. Yeah. Pulling, pulling away from friends and family. Mm. Kind of isolating right. themselves. Right, right. That's... Um, that can be something having no desire to take part in, like maybe family things mm -hmm. or with friends, um, activities, the trouble concentrating. Mm. 
and thinking clearly. Right. You could see a change in eating or sleeping habits. Ah, uh, okay. Another thing. Okay. Um, and self-destructive behaviors, maybe with alcohol or drugs or mm -hmm. um, that type of thing, cutting. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not saying people who use drugs, alcohol, or are cutting are suicidal. Oh, okay. It's okay. a good distinction. But it's important to know that if you are seeing some of these changes, right. there's something going on. There's something on going on. You got to address it and figure it out. Sure. Yeah. Sure. So when we kind of get back to, I think one of your questions is, how do we prevent this? Mm -hmm. Is it's really important to make sure that our that we make sure that our young people, as well as as adults, we learn coping skills. Mm. Sure. Because if I don't have any coping skills, mm -hmm. if I have no coping skills, I don't know how to cope when something goes wrong sure. or, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, how am I going to deal with it then? Right. Sure. Yeah. So does that Absolutely. make sense? Absolutely. Yes, okay. it does. Yes. Okay. All right. Got another one? Try to stump the counselor here. I'm going to try to. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you just Making made, sure so keep going. <laughs> so, uh... So I guess, you know, you kind of brought up a good point with parents uh, and things like that. Mm -hmm. and, and obviously, you know, uh, as uh, as Katie's uh, father said, there was a lot of pressure put onto Katie. Now, granted, he never specified, you know, who put the pressure on Katie, if Katie put the pressure on herself or if Katie's school put it on her or if, um, you know, her parents did or whatever. But sometimes I think that... Uh, a lot of the times parents tend to put that pressure on kids to be the best, to be the greatest, to, to do all these things. Now, granted, I'm sure as you'll, you'll talk about, there's nothing wrong with setting a high standard for your kids because we want our kids to do mm -hmm. the best they can. Mm -hmm. But I guess, uh, why do you think parents put so much pressure on their children to succeed? And maybe where is the balance between, you know, setting a standard and taking it too far? Okay. If that makes sense. Okay. So I, I think I kind of have maybe a two or even three part answer to this. Okay. Well, it's a two Here or three part question. So. Okay. <laughs> well, let's good. see what we can come up with. <laughs> well, one thing, as a parent, you want what you want best for your kids. Sure. You want them to experience yeah. the best. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. You want them to succeed. Mm -hmm. All right. As a parent, not only do you want that for your child, but if my kid succeeds. Mm, yeah. Oh. makes me look good. Mm -hmm. It sure. makes me look good because sure. you know what? If I have to stand and go, yeah, my kid um, has, you know, they they weren't successful in mm -hmm. this and it's, you know, they, they lost the game for us. They, mm. you know, I can't have bragging rights, so to say. Mm. And I'm not saying that parents go around and have, you know, feel the need to brag, but think about... The pressure that the child might feel when they hear their parent maybe, mm -hmm. you know, kind of going on sure. and talking about them in a way like, wow, yeah, that was great. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, sharing their, you know, right. a lot of their, you know, putting it all out there on mm -hmm. social media. And I'm mm -hmm. not saying don't do right. that. Sure. I'm just saying be aware of, of how you're sharing it mm -hmm. and... Um, because now, all of a sudden, if I'm your kid and mm -hmm. you can't share right. that about me because I'm not performing up to mm. what you were hoping like and I was even hoping, that. Sure. that can be hard for me to deal with as a, as a young person. Mm. Right. Um, so yeah, the message we send. Now, as a parent, I think a great approach is in setting goals. Mm. Goals are great. Right. I mean, Sure. Setting goals with your kid. Let yeah. them come up with, you know, what is your goal for basketball this year? Right. What is your goal for track? What is your right. goal for soccer? Right. You know, whatever. Music. Right. I mean, whatever sure. it is that you're right. involved in. Right. What is your goal? Yeah. What is it that you want to see yourself doing? Sure. And then is that realistic? <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean. Can, can they actually meet it? Is can, that, yeah. is that realistic? Is that now, yeah. Yeah. I don't right. want to be a goal basher. I right. don't want to say, oh, you're never going to achieve that. Right. But I also want to be realistic. So right. as a parent, we can say, right. you know, that's a, I think that's a realistic goal mm -hmm. or that's a goal. Mm -hmm. um, right. You're going to have to, right. 
you know, what's your plan at reaching that? Sure. Because that's a pretty big goal. Sure. Definitely. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, are there pressures it, out there? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And right. it's pressures beyond what, you know, parents mm -hmm. and coaches and right. teachers and youth leaders. And right. I mean, yeah. everybody <laughs> oh, else's yeah. society <laughs> right. is putting the Definitely. pressures on yep. to achieve. Yeah. Absolutely. So, yeah. There's a ton of pressures on kids, way more right. than, you know, back in the day when I was a kid. Right. We had pressures. Time was a lot simpler. It's a lot simpler. Right. Boy, if we could go back. Right. <laughs> Sorry, you can't. If we could go back. If we could. Yep. <laughs> they haven't developed that yet. Yeah. Um, so, uh, one of the other things that was really interesting uh, that uh, that the Today Show uh, showed mm -hmm. um, with Katie was uh, she was very active on her TikTok. Um, on her social mm -hmm. media platforms mm -hmm. and things like that. And they, I mean, granted, I don't know if she had shared quote unquote depressing videos or anything like that, but they only showed the videos where she was doing her funny TikTok dances and she mm -hmm. was showing her happiness and she was, mm -hmm. you know, doing all this stuff. So I don't know if necessarily that was all that she put out there, but that's what they showed. Just her social media pages mm -hmm. and social media mm -hmm. stuff where she was happy. Um, so do you think that maybe there's a connection between the, the two, between social media outlets and suicide on young people? Do you think yeah. there's a connection between I mean, the two? I think there's a connection between social media and mental health. Ah, okay. Um, who puts out... I mean, we talk about highlight reels all the time right. because that's what people put out there. Yeah. Who puts their low light reels? <laughs> I mean, I, I like don't it. even know if that's I like a it. term. I Maybe like I just coined right. the term. Right. But do I want to put like all my, and, and there are some people who do. Right. And I don't know. Maybe that's a way to, you know, look for mm. support or look right. for some sympathy or, mm -hmm. you know, what. But most people generally, are putting out something to laugh at right. or something to make people think about a little bit right. or their highlight reels. Right. They want approval. Right. When I'm not getting the approval, yeah. the likes, mm. the shares, mm -hmm. the comments back to me that are like, yeah, right on that type of thing. Right. You know, I don't know if kids say right on now, but you know what I'm, what do they say, Josh? I, well, I or, think, what, I what? think, well, uh, they don't depends. say right on. Like, they might say, like, cool. they might say like cool or tight or, uh, tight. yeah, like okay. that's, that's tight. Oh, that's, le that's at least when I was a kid. Okay. That's what we all said, but okay. who knows so, what they say nowadays. It's always changing. So if they're not getting the kind of reactions that they want, like, wow, I've right. got a great following. I've got a great... You know, I've gotten, I got, do you know how many likes she got on that? Sure. They watch that. They right. watch what everybody else is getting too. Right. So if I'm putting stuff out there and it used to get a lot of likes or maybe even mediocre and mm. now my approval rating right. has fallen mm. and I may be struggling with some other things that I'm not putting out there right. because it's important for me to make everybody think that I've got it all together. Mm. Right. Could social media have a play in that? I right. think so. Right. I think right. so. Right. So, and I, maybe we need to clarify this. Our, we're, we're not necessarily telling students or telling people to not have social media. No. Necessarily. No, I, I use social media. Right. I mean, ever, uh, most people do, not everybody. Yeah. It's either your thing or it's not. Right. But um, being aware of what's being shared mm -hmm. and how you're reacting to what is being shared shared with your stuff mm -hmm. um, that you're putting out there. Um, you know, what message are you sending mm -hmm. and how am I taking the feedback that I get? Right. Right. So if I'm in a, in a place emotionally right. where I can, I can handle and go, well, yeah, right. you know, they're, they are kind of true on what they said, right. you know, or whatever, or I can brush it right. off or I can right. go, mm, yeah, right. whatever. Right. Um, but if I'm not, yeah. that's where problems could come in. That's mm -hmm. where maybe if I'm struggling right. anyway, right. some of those suicidal thoughts yeah. could come in. Yeah. 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 And so then it's like, do I feel comfortable going and asking for help or uh -huh. not? Is, uh -huh. Am I just, right. you know, why should I even bother? Right. Have a, 
maybe maybe you already have, but uh, uh, Hannah and I, which is my wife, her daughter, um, uh, we uh, uh, we watched a documentary together called The Social Dilemma. Mm. Have you seen that? Um, I would watch that? that. Yes, oh, I have. Yes, I would encourage. Okay. I yeah. would encourage parents I, to sit down and watch I it with too. their kids. Yes. Hundred percent. I think the last time we saw it, it was on Netflix. Mm-hmm. I think, right? Mm-hmm. Which is so odd that Netflix would put something like that out when they're a part of this dilemma, you know. But maybe I guess they, money's maybe money. Think, yeah, you know, maybe they part think of the business. They're not as much a part of the right, dilemma. Right. Right. Maybe or pointing they're, they're the finger sharing like, the hey, good news. yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, oh, go look at them. <laughs> Don't look at us. Look over yeah. there at them. Yeah, look at right. Facebook and TikTok right. and absolutely, and absolutely. We're dinging across the board here. Yeah, man. All right. So, uh, what useful tips can you give to parents about having conversations about suicide or mental health as a whole? So, I know that you had talked about you know having those conversations and you know talking to people about it, but there might be some parents out there that just really just don't know or they think well this is such an awkward topic that I don't even know where to begin or where to start yeah so how do you have that conversation at the dinner table or even you know when you get home from work or what whatever like what kind of tips would you give to parents about that I don't think a lot of kids are going to start the conversation sure right I I may be wrong right so parents we need to adult up here and mm. we need to start the conversation. Right. It right. might make you feel a little weird sure. and uncomfortable, but start the conversation. Yeah. Right. Um, you know, just even, you know, saying things like, wow, I read this article today or I saw right. this and right. what do you think about that? Right. You know, and I know a lot of parents will say, well, my kids just go, hmm, yeah, yeah, whatever, <laughs> you know, <laughs> that was a good impression. Get an answer. <laughs> right. Get an right, answer from right, them. Say, well, right. what do you mean by eh? Yeah. Do you agree with it? Because mm-hmm. I'm not sure how I right. feel. Can you tell me? Right. Maybe I'm missing something. What do you think I need to know? Sure. You know, sure. just pull it out of them. Right. Pull it out of them. Right. Um, and then sh- shut up and listen. Yeah, just listen. Give them some time. Sure. Wait them out. Sure. Um, but yeah, that's really important is to... Try to get that conversation going Mm -hmm. and do it when they're in a halfway good mood. I mean, if you can find that nanosecond, sometimes that's what it is, is a nanosecond of when they're in a good mood and you're in a good mood, everybody's happy. Um, Right. Embrace that moment. Sure. And start that conversation. Sure. Sure. Now, I I assume as, uh, as you're sitting here on... The gospel truth. Uh, the gospel truth. The, like you're, you're and yeah. you're, you're obviously a youth leader here in the church with us um, in our in our youth group for our high schoolers. Uh, I believe you could label yourself as a Christian counselor mm-hmm. or a counselor that you know. I mean, obviously, you're not preaching the gospel to your students because it's a public school type situation. But uh, but I'm sure that if it arose, you would want to talk about God or talk about yeah. Jesus in a way. But how could we incorporate our faith with mental health like so for instance could because i've had this question before if i'm battling suicidal thoughts or if i'm battling mental health issues am i not saved or do i not have true devout faith what would you say to something like that specifically i mean because i have my answer for as a youth pastor but I, what, what would your answer yeah. be as a clinical uh, I'm not, counselor not a clinical oh counselor. you're not a cli- clinical no, sorry I'm a school excuse counselor. me school counselor um i would as a Christian, yeah. who also is a school counselor, right. who is a parent, yeah. who loves to work with kids here yeah. in the church through the youth program, um, how would I address it if they said, "What, you know, where if if one of our youth kids, let's say, came right. to me and said, you know, I feel terrible because I'm having these thoughts mm-hmm. and I I don't know why, right. you know, I know the Bible tells me." You know, I, I should be focusing on God and whatever. Sure. Okay. But why am I having these thoughts? Mm-hmm. Is it because I'm really not a Christian, sure. you know, or right. it has something to do with my faith or right. whatever? Um, to me, my answer is the enemy or Satan is getting to you. Right. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. And when we, because those thoughts do not come from God. Right. Yeah. Those thoughts yeah. come from the enemy. Mm-hmm. Definitely. And if he can worm his way in, right. 
which he loves to do, right. and be deceitful, right. and be crafty. Right. And if you start to entertain those thoughts, mm -hmm. he's going to roll with it. Right. He's like, come on, baby, right. let's go. Right. And right. so that's when we have taken our eyes off of our focus, which right. is God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit, and we're listening to those three, the Trinity, mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. give us what we need mm -hmm. and to pull us away from the negative thoughts right um that's when we're going to struggle is if we don't keep our eyes on the focus right i know we we did some talk mm -hmm. a few weeks ago about sure. you know where is our focus mm -hmm. and are we letting the enemy sneak his way in because right. social media can be the enemy mm -hmm. it doesn't mean it is all the time right. and i'm not saying right. You know, shut down all your social media. Right. Um, but he'll use it. But he'll use he'll it. He'll use it. Use whatever he yeah. can yes, he to will. get to you. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So. Yeah. What was uh, what was the name of that uh, that uh, that book that you don't let the don't give the enemy a seat at your table. Hmm. Yeah. I, I suggest you uh, recommend that book I or would. recommend that I study would. for parents yeah. and stuff. Yeah, I actually, um, I actually. Um, did a youth one of our youth yep. group nights yep. um, on that topic, and mm -hmm. I think the kids connected with it. Yeah, I think. I, yeah, um, it sounded like they did. They commented and, on it. So okay, yeah. and um, but I just think even adults that I've shared mm -hmm. that book with mm -hmm. have said this keeps this is something that keeps coming back into my mind. So when we think about that, it's giving the enemy a seat at your table is more or less where we aren't keeping our focus right. on God. Right. Okay. And that's right. hard to do in this world. Right. But it can be done. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. No, I 100% agree. Well, we're a little over our time that I, I, even though I told you about a five or 10 minute turned into a 32 Sorry. minute conversation. No, it wasn't your fault. This was all my fault. You know, it's just very important stuff. But, uh, um, I, I mean, would, any other final thoughts yeah, that you I have on this? Yeah, I would just say or? if as a parent, if you are feeling uncomfortable and you want to have that talk mm -hmm. um, or you just want more information, there's a lot of resources out mm -hmm. there. You can come and talk to us. Maybe, Josh, would you want to share that in your end? Sure. Stuff? Yeah, absolutely. I especially like kidshealth.org. Oh, okay. um, it's a great website. Mm -hmm. It also has a parent's link on there. So ah, parents can get okay. some information on there. It's it's a good, strong there you go. um, site. Good. Um, I mean, there's there are a lot of um, reputable sure. suicide sure. information um sites out there that you can get information from but right. go in and talking with somebody right um if you are ever concerned that your child might be suicidal mm -hmm. don't wait until it gets so worse it's, right. or it's too late right um right. and and don't dispel their thinking if they mm -hmm. say this just don't say just stop thinking about that right because it's something that has to be dealt with sure yeah. Absolutely. And for kids, if you are ever having those thoughts, go and talk to someone. Yeah. Don't be Absolutely. You know, don't don't hesitate. It's not an right. easy conversation to mm -hmm. have, but it's an important one because yeah. it could it could save your life. Right. But go and talk to go talk to someone that you trust. I right. mean, find somebody and mm -hmm. If you're saying, I really don't know who that is, right. they might be saying, Josh, it's not you, Laurel, it's not you. Mm -hmm. um, go to your school counselor. If you're saying it's not them, right. go to a friend. And if a friend ever comes to you and says, I'm thinking about this, mm -hmm. or you have concerns about it, right. and you ask them and they say, maybe they are thinking about it, but mm -hmm. don't tell anybody. And if you do, I will right. do something to right. hurt myself. Right. Tell. Yeah. Yeah. Tell. Yeah. For sure. Absolutely. That's what I'll leave you with. All right. Well, thank you so much, uh, Laurel slash Mrs. K, for being here today. Uh, we've greatly appreciated your insight. And I, you know what? I, I've had so much fun talking to you. I think we're going to have you back on this show again. But maybe we'll talk about something a little more joyful, okay. Okay. a little more Let's fun. Yeah. So, yeah. There we go. <laughs> uh, so I assume now you're going to probably go and see the grandbabies and um, go yeah, hang out with. 20 minutes, I have a meeting. Oh, so. well, or just go have your meeting. That's fine. Yeah. 
So we're going to take a break. Uh, go ahead and watch these uh, announcements that we have that are coming up in our church and in our community. Then when we come back, uh, I'm going to continue on with this episode with also a movie review that I just recently watched. So stay tuned. And we got more of the gospel truth coming up right after this. Busy lives, time is sure to fly by Don't forget to take a moment, take a look up in the sky Think about the blessings, all the blessings that you got It's a great day, great day to be alive. be alive With all the busy lives, time is sure to fly by Don't forget to take a moment, take a look up in the sky Think about the blessings, all the blessings that you got It's a great day, great day to be alive We sing in I'm blessed with feet and I'm blessed with air for breathing Breathing, breathing, breathing With all the busy lives, time is sure to fly by Don't forget to take a moment, take a look up in the sky Think about the blessings, all the blessings that you got It's a great day, great day to be alive With all the busy lives, time is sure to fly by Don't forget to take a moment, take a look up in the sky Think about the blessings, all the blessings that you got It's a great day, great day to be alive We sing it. Hi, and welcome back uh, to The Gospel Truth. Uh, I am Josh Lucas, your host, and, uh, and I uh, thank you again for, for joining me uh, on, this, uh, on this episode of The Gospel Truth. So now, uh, uh, I want to take a break from, uh, from talking about uh, uh, the suicide uh, portion of this, uh, this discussion, and uh, we'll get back to that in a minute. Um, but I want to take an opportunity to do another segment of this show uh, that, uh, that I would just, uh, simply like to call the movie review. Um, and, uh, and I think it's really important that we as Christians, especially as parents, uh, we take time to really look at, uh, the movie industry and look at movies that, uh, that we want to show with our kids, um, or even show to our kids. And even you as students, uh, for it's, it's really important that when, uh, that when we're going and watching movies or we're going and listening to music or going to concerts, things like that, that we look at, is this stuff that I'm going to watch or is this music that I'm going to listen to, <clears throat> excuse me, is this, is this really pure entertainment purposes or is this just garbage and junk that's going to hinder my faith? Um, so I hope that this encourages you, um, but, I, but I also really felt very convicted by, uh, uh, by this movie that I'm going to be talking about and especially since because it's a brand new Disney and Pixar movie. Um, and so this is about the the new the brand new Disney Pixar movie Turning Red. And if you haven't uh, heard of this movie or seen this movie, it's a uh, brand new just came out I believe uh, this year. Um, and uh, and it's on uh, Disney Plus. And actually right now it's one of their featured films uh, with a documentary about the making of this movie because it's it's essentially made history because it's the first female all production um movie that disney has made so of course it's a part of history right and it's a part of it's a part of this whole idea of feminism and it's inclusive and it's uh it's revolutionary solely because it's an all-female cast and it's an all female well, not an all female cast but like the main leads they're all female the directors are female producers are female color artists are female i believe uh, just everybody is is essentially female they got a few males in there but overall it's labeled as the first all female uh, uh movie and it centers around the story of may may a 13 year old girl who is going through the process of teenhood. And uh, as she's going through this process of teenhood, uh, she also has to deal with her overbearing and overprotective mother 
<clears throat> while also dealing with this family curse that she has inherited where she turns into a red panda anytime that she gets overwhelmed with her emotions and now she has to wait one month in order to uh in order to wait for the next red moon in order for her to perform a ritual with her family so that the red panda leaves her body and she is cured of this curse and so she has to go through life dealing with this issue of being a red panda uh, and transforming into the red panda anytime that she has like an uh, uh, an emotional uh, a really high emotional um, episode as a lot of 13 year old girls have so on the surface it looks like a very cute disney movie unfortunately you would be very wrong as i was I was very excited for this movie. I saw the trailer uh, for the first time, I believe, a year ago, or a little over a year ago. Uh, actually, I believe it was when I went and saw the Incredibles movie, uh, the Incredibles two movie. Um, I believe that's when it uh, when I first saw it. I could be wrong; don't quote me on it. But I believe that's where I saw it for the first time, um, and uh, and I was very excited. It looked like a very uh, a very original Disney movie. Almost like Toy Story or Frozen. I I love Disney movies. I, <laughs> hello, I'm a big Disney guy. I love Disney. I love showing my kids Disney movies. I mean, pretty much almost every night, my daughter, my three year old daughter, wants to watch a Disney movie. It's either Finding Nemo, Finding Dory, one of the Monsters Incorporated films like Monsters Inc., Monster University, or Toy Story. Those are the four biggest uh, ones that she was really into. But she also really likes Moana, the Frozen series, um, and uh, uh, and also some of the other classics that we have shown her before. She loves watching Disney movies. And just like all young kids love. Because why? Because they're cartoons. And they're very simple stories, right? But that's not the case with Turning Red. And here's why. Uh, so I just want to... <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm sorry. I got the tickle in my throat. I'm not sick, I promise. Um, but uh, I just want to highlight a couple of the things about turning red. And this is what I want to warn you about. And when I when I finish with this review and I give and I give my opinion on it and I and I give what I noticed in the film, uh, I'm gonna give a scale of one to five. One is don't go see this movie and a five is it's perfectly fine go take your kids so anywhere in between it's like well you could if you want to but you know so just kind of vary it uh by uh by how you see it okay It'd be your interpretation but if it's a one or a five it's a definite yay or nay okay so that's how the scoring system is going to go for this. So hopefully it's a lot of fun. I love watching movies, and this is something that I've always wanted to do uh, was to review movies um, and, and really just help families out because I know it's very important for us as families. We want to protect our kids. We want to make sure that what we're showing them is good, wholesome stuff. But let's get into Turning Red. So uh, the focus of Turning Red in the very first 30 seconds of the film this is essentially what May May, the lead character, is saying and portraying in her uh, um, in her opening remarks. Is we're always being taught to honor our parents. That is what we are told to honor our parents. But if we honor our parents too much, then we forget to honor ourselves. That's the opening thirty seconds of the film. Is teaching kids to yeah honor your parents, but don't honor them too much. I'm pretty sure if we look back at the Ten Commandments and we look at what God himself said about honoring our father and mother, he clearly said, honor your father and mother, period. That's it. There is no like, honor your father and your mother, only a little bit so then you don't forget to honor yourself. Uh the next thing, uh, it, it does have a an agenda of of wanting to take away God or take away any type of religion, for that matter, because the family is considered religious, but they don't follow after any other God. They don't follow after one God. They honor their ancestors, which is uh, essentially a a, a modern uh, Chinese uh, tradition. Um, it, it it almost sounded like sort of like Mulan. 
Uh, so the the very famous Disney movie Mulan from back in 1998, I believe it was. Um, that's how they believed. Uh, they uh, that's how they believed in their religion was they didn't necessarily believed in one specific god. They just believed that their ancestors who have passed on are angels, kind of, but they're protecting their family now and providing for them. <coughs> um, and so. So that's what they believe. So that in itself uh, is already, you know, some people would dare to argue that this is a, uh, oh, this is teaching kids about culture. Well, okay. But why do we got, why do they have to bring the religion into this? They go out of their way to say, we don't believe in a God. That's literally what they say. We don't believe in a God. We believe in our ancestors. Okay. So, how does that not confuse a child, especially a Christian child who's being taught that there is a God? Uh, The other thing, the red panda has attributes of a God, uh, providing good fortune, protection, uh, having superpowers, having super strength. You know, all these these things that when she transforms into this red panda, that's what she has the ability to do. Um, but ironically, it's also a curse that only affects the women of the family. It doesn't affect the men. Um, uh, so, you know, there you go. However, I mean, I, I will agree that, that, you know, the, 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 the mother does have a very important role in the family and does have a very important role in the household. Um, but as it regards to, uh, God's created order of things, um, you know, it just it it creates a confusion, uh, and it, and it almost puts the you know women on a pedestal over men, and I don't know how that's a quality, but that's above me. Um, two minutes in, they uh, the the kids are 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 swearing. Now they're swearing as twelve year or thirteen year olds swear. You know, they say things. Uh, like crap or they you know they you know say certain words like that so it's not, I mean it's not a big deal but it's like in a Disney movie I, I've never heard that before in a Disney movie um, but uh, but it's just you know little things like that like really do we really have to go there in a Disney movie um, uh, pornographic material and pornographic images are labeled uh, in this movie uh, May May has a, a very uh, uh, a very big crush on this 17-year-old uh, boy. Um, yeah, so right then and there, a 13-year-old has a crush on a 17-year-old. Yeah, that's not dangerous. Um, but, uh, but anyway, she has a very good talent of, of drawing. And so she has this notebook that she carries, and she draws uh, she, she draws um, pictures of her and this boy kissing and hugging and doing who knows what the the camera never shows us what she drew but her mother she comes in right after she gets drawn, done drawing these things and she comes in and she grabs the notebook and she's looking through the notebook her mother is and she's like ah oh, ah oh, ah oh. well what does this mean what does this symbolize it symbolizes pornographic material um, and now this is very, very controversial. Um, uh, this movie, uh, puts a huge emphasis on girls periods, um, where they even talk about it. It's actually a big premise where they talk about, uh, you know, uh, maxi pads. They talk about the time of the month. They talk about, you know, all these different aspects of girls periods. Now, of course, you know, it is educational, it is, you know, it is natural, you know, but does it really need to be in a Disney movie? I mean, what would, what would you say if you went and saw a Disney movie where, um, where it was about a boy, but a, but a boy was, you know, dealing with, uh, you know, a certain issue that boys do. I mean, they don't have, uh, they don't have a menstrual system like girls do, but, um, but how would you feel if uh, if it was talking about boys' genitals and stuff that boys do, you'd be pretty disgusted by it, wouldn't you? 
So it just it's just one of those things like do do we really need to talk about it or even joke about it um, in a Disney movie, especially when it's geared more towards little kids. I mean, because I don't really know the last time a 13-year-old had said, yeah, well, no, no, I want to go see a Disney movie. No. Um, and there are, there are a couple of, of, of good things that I did applaud in this movie. I mean, of course, I can even admit there were a couple of things. Like, one of the things that I did applaud was, um, was uh, the dangers of being an overprotective parent. Um, which I do agree with, um, you know, we can't be helicopter parents, but it, it almost was trying to say like, don't like, just let your kids do whatever they want, essentially, you know, um, uh, one of the kids, uh, was, was explaining that, uh, uh, that, um, was explaining that, uh, that, one of the kids was explaining what a stripper is, um, and even used the word stripper. Um, uh, another premise was lying to their parents to go to a concert that they that they all wanted to go to, Mamie and all of her friends. Um, so they're teaching children that if you really want to go somewhere, you know, lie to your parents and it's okay. Um, defying and deliberately disrespecting her mother. Uh, Father and the males in the movie were all perceived as spineless cowards. Um, you know, uh, uh, I mean, just other different depictions of just horrific things. But this is this was the worst part about this movie, and thankfully it was at the end because if it was at the beginning, I would have shut it off. Which you can kind of see my rating that I'm going to give on this movie, but. Um, but at the end of the movie, uh, um, I mean, I don't want to give too much away, um, but uh, but uh, but May May, you know, obviously she has this ability with the red panda and stuff. Um, so towards the end of the movie, um, she finally develops a, a way that she can control the red panda, um, at least until she has to perform the ritual, and uh, and so. Uh, she has the ability to transform into the red panda whenever she wants. Uh, she just has to control her emotions. Um, but she's also able to control certain aspects of the red panda that, uh, that, that show up. Um, so she decides that when she wants to go out with her friends on this one specific night, she, was gonna, she only has the red panda ears and the red panda tail. Well, her mom says, May May, are you actually going to go out dressed like that or go out like that? And May May says... My panda, my choice, mom. My panda, my choice. Parents, students, stay away from this movie. It, it, it is just pure evil. I mean, and I, and I, I know that that may sound like a stretch, but I get if I could give a negative number, I would, a negative one thousand. Do not do not show your kids this movie. Do not watch this movie. Do not watch this garbage. It's not cute. It's not. It's not even a fun movie to watch. It, it was kind of boring to me. I I started falling asleep at a couple of parts. Like it really wasn't. Um, it really wasn't entertaining. It was it was purely a movie. That was trying to make a political statement. That's all that it was. So, uh, yeah, I I can't I just can't stress this enough. Um, and there's you know there's that debate of you know do we even support Disney? Do we support you know Disney Plus? Do you you know? And I I'm not gonna make that condemning statement to say that you know if you if you have a disney plus subscription you know you are feeding into this evil and you're feeding into this you're feeding into that because here's the thing if we start saying stuff like that then we better not shop at places like target walmart amazon uh you know pretty much any other big business starbucks whatever um, because all these businesses have been known to donate to Planned Parenthood, 
uh, have been, uh, you know, running uh, child sweatshops and all these other horrific things. Um, you know, we can't live under a rock completely. But if you can find an alternative, find an alternative. Um, but I would suggest with the movie Turning Red on Disney Plus, do not watch this film. So we're gonna. I'm gonna move back uh, on to this. Uh, back to the new segment uh or the segment that we were uh that we were talking about earlier with uh with with laurel um and it was katie meyer um and it is a it is really a tragedy especially since uh you know everything about katie uh seemed to be like she was uh, she was the life of the party she was the life of the of the team uh, she was the captain of the team, of the girls' soccer team uh, at Stanford. Uh, she was the goalie, and actually, uh, she blocked. Um, uh, she actually blocked uh, the two uh, the two penalty kicks uh, in the uh, in the national championship that Stanford was in, and essentially was labeled as the reason why they won the national championship. So, Katie has a national championship under her belt. You know, and so you know it begs the question: what what would drive a person that has all that to want to do this? You know, especially since you know, like I said, you know, her dad and her teammates, everything else, uh, were, were saying things like a larger than life team player, an outstanding student athlete, and a beloved, passionate leader. I mean. You know, but but you heard what what Laurel had said, and I and I agree with with essentially everything that that Laurel had said, um, and not because she's my mother-in-law, but because she makes uh, very valid points. Is that you know when we as parents, it's great to set goals for our kids, but are we really taking into account how our kids feel about these things? And of course, you know, if they want to set these goals for themselves, okay, that's great. But sometimes, are they really thinking straight? Are our kids thinking correctly? You know, and I and I think that's that's where a lot of the times where us parents we have to step in and 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 tell our kids, hey, I really don't think you should be doing this this hard or this much, you know. Because her dad explained that she had a lot of pressure that was put on her. Now, granted, we don't know what that pressure was, but there was a lot of pressure on her. And now, I, I myself here in this in this town in Iowa, I I am surrounded by student athletes. I have a lot of students around me that 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 love playing sports, that are very active in their sports. And when I see things like Katie, when I see news, news uh, headline news like like Katie's story, it it really it really scares me sometimes. You know, because I I sometimes tend to think that you know, or even question myself, like, are we putting too much pressure on our kids to succeed? Or are we putting too much pressure on our kids to be the best? And if they're not the best, or if they're not number one, or if they didn't do this or they didn't do that, then how are we going to treat them at home? Or how are we going to view them at home? Because, because here's here's how I've here's how I've been trying to perceive the whole like student athlete and and like. Uh, I don't know the the persona of being the best. What is it ultimately going to get you here in this life? May get you a couple scholarships, okay, good. May get you a couple of news headlines, okay, cool. Bragging rights, yeah, very good. But can you take that stuff with you to heaven? Are you going to be taking all your medals to heaven? Are you going to be taking your trophies? Are you going to be taking, you know, all these things with you to heaven? No, you're not. When you stand before God on judgment day, is God going to pick out the best one and then say like, "Oh, you're my best angel," or "You're my best 
servant, whatever. So you get the top of heaven, whereas the rest of you get the bottom of heaven. No. That's not how God works. God doesn't pick favorites. God doesn't look at who has done the best work. God looks at who is faithful. Because, because that's how we got to view things. Every single person has a gift. Every single person has a gift to offer God. Every single person has a gift to offer the church, to offer their school, to offer themselves, their family. But we have to discover it and we have to embrace it. Of course, there is context with this. But we shouldn't be looking at our kids and going, well, if you're not, you know, sometimes we even think of the Ricky Bobby mentality. If you ain't first, you're last, right? And yeah, that's a hilarious quote, but but sometimes I, I really do think that, that we as parents do that to our kids. I mean, I even do that with my three-year-old when we're out and about with, with other kids or we're at a church event or whatever. Like I'm always looking around going, you know, I catch myself going, okay, let's see. All right, well, she's not doing that. She's not doing that. Okay, she must be good. She's the top of the line kid. And then, of course, God serves me a bit of humble pie, you know, because then she starts screaming or she starts running and she's not listening or she starts having a meltdown right in, right in the middle of church or right in the middle of wherever we're at. And it's like, oh, okay, you're a normal three-year-old. Okay, cool. But it's not. But 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 see, what I've decided is that no matter what my child does or what my children do, like if they're not the number one best at it, it's not going to make me love them any less or any more. Am I going to be proud of them? Yeah, sure. It's like yeah, you did it. You you made it number one. Awesome. You did great. But then it's like you know, if you got second, you got third. Okay. How do you feel about that? Well, I wish I could have done better. Okay, how can we how could we do better? You know, don't don't go home and 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 force your child to feel a certain way. You know, if your child is disappointed, okay, awesome. Okay, that's great. How can we fix this together? Encourage your children. Don't belittle them. Don't break them down. Because here's the thing and this is what I want. I this is what I want everyone to hear right now the way that you're raising your kids is the way that you is the way that you, that your grandkids are going to be raised the way that you're raising your kids right now is the way that your grandkids are going to be raised so of course, you know, I mean, everybody has their own parenting style, but but there are parenting, uh, there are parenting things that that rub off from us, from what our parents did, and then we start putting it into practice with our own kids. Now, of course, you know, we adapt to those things. We go, oh, that really actually doesn't work, or oh, that's really terrible, um, you know, or whatever. But I've even caught myself. My wife caught herself doing it too. We always go, oh, well, that's what happened to me when I was a kid. Or that's what my dad did. Or that's what my mom did. Or, you know, whatever. And so that's what I decided to do. Or that's what I'm doing unconsciously. So is this how you want your grandchildren to be treated as? Do you want your grandchildren to think like this? And, and this is the craziest thing. And, and I don't know if, if they're going to hear this or not. But I want to I I speak to Stanford. And I really want to speak to really schools or organizations that deal with this sort of issue. Or has students. This, was, this is Stanford's response to Katie's suicide. They're going to add more clinical staff for these issues. That was their statement. We're going to add more staff to deal with these issues. To deal with what? To deal with suicide? Okay, so you're going to just add more people. 
Okay. All right. But here's the thing. They had already added 20% more staff to shorten the wait times for students to be seen. This was their quote unquote, this is what we did before. And now here's how we're going to better it. So they added 20% more clinical staff so that they could shorten the wait times for students to be seen. Notice how they worded that. This is directly from Stanford themselves. To shorten the wait times for students to be seen. What are they saying that the issue is? They're saying that the issue is that students are waiting too long to be seen, so therefore they're going to go off and they're going to kill themselves or they're going to go off and do whatever because they're, they're, because they're wasting their time to be seen. Stanford schools, organizations. Additional staff is not going to help this situation. It's not. It's, it's, it's just, it's not. And how do I know this? Um, because we as a community have dealt with this issue, with the issue of suicide. And it's probably an issue that we're never ultimately going to solve ever. Because, because why? Because evil exists. And I'm not saying that people who commit suicide are evil. I'm saying the act is evil. But who causes evil? Satan. Stanford, schools, organizations. We need to bring in the gospel. We need to repent. We need to turn back to God. plain and simple. Everything that's been going on in our nation, everything that has been going on in our world, in our, in our schools, all over this nation and all over everything, it's because we've turned our backs to, to God. We have, allowed, uh, we have allowed homosexual marriage. We have allowed transgenderism. We have allowed sex changes. We have allowed uh, men to go into women's bathrooms and women to go into, 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 into men's bathrooms. We have allowed abortion we have allowed uh you know uh, drug addiction we've allowed all these all these horrific acts that god calls abominations we have allowed these things to infiltrate our to infiltrate our nation and we're paying the price for it and you think it's going to get better but it's not it's going to get worse and you want to know how I know that? Because God's holy and sacred word says that it's going to, going to do it. That's how it's going to happen. And if it's not caused directly by God, he's going to allow us to destruct ourselves. Students, I just want you to understand something. You are an amazing creation of God. You are not an accident. You are not created by some random act of, of atomic explosions. You were, uh, you, were not, uh, you were not evolved from an ape or a fish or some type of bacteria. You have worth. You have value. And you have a purpose. You have a plan here on this earth. But you need to turn away from your sin and you need to trust in Jesus Christ for salvation. That is the call of the gospel. And I want to share this, uh, this passage with you. So this is this is really speaking to to the issue of, of those who are struggling with this uh, with this pressure, struggling with this uh, with this issue of mental health and, and even suicide. Romans chapter twelve verses one through uh, through two. 
I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. It's very simple, students. If you are feeling like you are distant from God, if you feel like that that God does not care for you or God is not watching over you, it's not because He is distancing Himself from you. It's because you're distancing yourself from Him. So take a step back. Look at the way that you are living your life. Look at your priorities. Look at what you are doing with your faith. Are you actually doing something to strengthening your faith, to grow in your faith? Or are you just doing doing the bare minimum? Like going to youth group every week or going to church every Sunday? Are you actually studying God's word? Are you actually, actually studying it from an exegetical standpoint, meaning actually digging into the context, reading uh, reading the background, the historical background, understanding what the text is actually saying, not just like what it means to you, but what does the text actually mean? That's what needs to be important. You're battling suicide, you're battling mental health, you're battling depression, uh, addiction, all these different things. I can understand. I, I was I was right there with you at one point in my life. And I still, I get tempted with it. It's not something that, that's just going to like magically go away and you're never going to deal with it again. There may come a time and a point where where you've, over, you, you've overcome it and you found victory over it. And, you know, so you, you, you learn how to, how to deal with it. Um, but, it, but ultimately, you've got to learn and you've got to strive for Jesus. Strive. Strive for that perfection that God calls you to, 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 to have. And just as Paul uh, tells us in his word, uh, Paul tells us in, in God's word, excuse me, uh, is that uh, in Philippians, uh, not that I've already obtained this, but I strive for perfection. I strive towards the goal of perfection. Forgetting what lies behind me, but looking ahead. So quit beating yourself up for what you did in your past. Quit beating yourself up for what 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 you were once or what you did once. Forgive yourself because you have been forgiven. Cry out to God. Put you on that so, that solid, firm foundation, and it'll be worth it. And you will slowly start to see how beautiful and how glorious your life will be. It may. It, it still will be hard. You will still have struggles. You will still have temptations. But guess what? You're now going to have the tools. And you are going to have the creator of the universe. The savior of the world in your corner. And you're going to know how to defeat these thoughts. These temptations. But it's going to take work. It's not just a snap of the fingers. It's gonna take work. I want to thank uh, my, my, my guest today. I, I want to thank uh, Laurel Clausen again for being on the show today. Had an amazing time with her and a great discussion. Uh, I've also, I'm going to add uh, all the links that she talked about today. Um, a couple of the, the, the books that we explained and the, the video series that we talked about. Um, but if, again, if you have any other questions or if you have anything that, we, that you want uh, discussed here on The Gospel Truth, please contact me and let me know. Um, but I, I hope and pray that you were blessed by this episode. 
This is the gospel truth. Thank you for watching. Be safe and make good choices. Cause I don't wanna go if you're not going before me. I don't wanna go if you're not going before me. I don't wanna go if you're not going before me. I don't wanna go if you're not going before me. Like Moses in the desert, I wanna see the land. But like Moses in the desert, I can't fully see your plan.